Welcoming viewers worldwide at CNN10.com and on iTunes, this is CNN10, and I'm your host, Carl Azus. Happy to start off a new week with you. First story takes us to the South American nation of Brazil, where a tragedy at an iron mine has buried parts of a city in mud. That city is Brumadinho. It's located in the southeastern part of the country. A dam broke on Friday, causing mud and mining debris to flood into the city and in other parts of the region. At least 37 people were killed when that happened, but Brazil's government and fire departments say that more than 250 others are still missing. Brazilian officials say the dam that burst was not considered to be high risk, so an investigation will be done to figure out exactly what led to the collapse. In the meantime, Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro said his administration would do everything it could to reach the victims and prevent another event like this from happening. The rescue effort has been going on around the clock, and hundreds of people have been found alive, despite the fact that it's been raining heavily, making the search harder. It had to be paused at one point after water levels had increased at a second dam in the area. Thousands were evacuated because of that, but they were allowed to return home yesterday after officials determined it wasn't likely to collapse. What happened Friday was the second time that a dam owned by this same mining company had burst. The other incident happened in late 2015. It killed 19 people, buried towns in mud, and polluted the environment. Moving to North America, where the partial shutdown of the U.S. government has ended, at least for a few weeks. President Donald Trump announced the news on Friday. The agreement reached between him and Congress does not include funding for the barrier between the U.S. and Mexico that Republicans and the president wanted. But he indicated that he'd still move ahead with his plans to build it if Congress does not reach an agreement on wall funding in the weeks ahead. The government will either shut down on February 15th again, or I will use the powers afforded to me under the laws and the Constitution of the United States to address this emergency. There are still some question marks about what happens next, because even though Democrats and Republicans will be working on a border security compromise in the weeks ahead, Democratic leaders like House Speaker Nancy Pelosi say funding for a wall will not be part of it. And they say another partial government shutdown shouldn't either. Disagreement in policy should never be a reason to shut down government, really shouldn't, especially, again, for a period of time that has an impact on the paychecks. Uh, and uh, I'm sad it has taken this long. I'm glad that we've come to a conclusion today as to how we go forward. As far as it goes for the federal employees who were directly affected by the shutdown, the president said that all of them would receive pay for the time they missed. 10 second trivia. Which French leader transformed a hunting lodge named Versailles into a massive palace surrounded by gardens? Charles X, Louis XIV, Napoleon Bonaparte, or Louis XVI? It was Louis XIV who expanded Versailles into the palatial complex that stands today. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, that expansion cost about as much as a modern-day airport. And it's not the only relic left behind by Louis XIV. His reign lasted from 1643 until his death in 1715. And during that time, French literature and art flourished. Arnold de Voyez was one of the artists who was active during this time. And a massive scene he painted was recently uncovered in France. But because the painting is significantly older than the building it was hidden in, it now represents a mystery as well as French history. As an architect who works on the ancient stones of Paris, Natalie Ryan is used to surprises, mostly unpleasant ones that complicate her job. But the surprise she came upon while creating a new boutique for fashion house Oscar de la Renta was nothing short of spectacular. Behind a wall in what used to be an insurance office, workers discovered a huge 10 by 20 foot oil painting, oil on canvas that was glued onto the wall. Art restorers were called in, and beneath layers of grime and ancient varnish, there emerged a 17th century masterpiece by Arnold de Vuillez, a favorite in the court of King Louis XIV. The first time I saw this work, my emotion was as big as the painting. As a restorer, right away I wanted to do a test to see what was underneath. What was underneath 
is what is believed to be one of a series of four paintings commissioned to depict the travels of Louis XIV's ambassador to the Middle East, here shown entering into Jerusalem in 1674. But while the painting and the painter have been identified, the question is how did a 17th century painting end up behind a wall in a building constructed in the 19th century? There's no clear answer. Was it stolen or was it found? Was it owned by the previous people that were here and they put it on the wall? Was it hidden during the war? There's a lot of theory. We can go there and do a, a whole uh, spy uh, story about it. The discovery, quite naturally, led the De La Renta managers to rethink the design of their Paris boutique and how best to display their masterpiece. They were indicated in the showroom. I think there's going to be special visits in order to see it. I felt like really you know, blessed uh, being a part of this whole experience. With the number of historic renovations that go on in this town, workers always have got a lot of tales about the discovery of treasures behind the walls, gold and jewelry, things like that. Most of them turn out to be fake or exaggerated. But in this case, the discovery turned out to be real. Jim Bitterman, CNN, Paris. <laughs>